We, the Delta Command, do hereby set in motion the principles of this document, the summa modus operandi of the Chaos Insurgency. We hold the following to be inescapable truths. The Foundation Overseers have altered the fabric of reality for the benefit of their own wicked desires. These alterations are the source of all supernatural activity in our universe. These grievances we hold against them. The Tenth Overseer has kept a dubious record of the Foundation's malfeasances and altered history to suit them, and has mocked truth and reason for the sake of maintaining the Foundation's cruel legacy. The Ninth Overseer has betrayed the trust of their fellow man and sworn allegiance to the Cancerous Council, and has time and time again turned away from opportunities to strike them down to prolong their greed-riddled intentions. The Eighth Overseer has committed wicked acts against the ignorant public with their careless use of nuclear weapons, and was one of the first to breathe life into an organization that should have been butchered in the crib. File number 001-10-0510, The Archivist. Formerly Diane Walters, a librarian, Caucasian female, appears to be in her late 40s. Possible strong connections to the Wanderer's Library, Extensive knowledge about the Foundation's involvement in previous end-of-the-world scenarios. Supposedly maintains a constant record of every activity taken on Earth from the moment she took her place on the Council forward. These records are used extensively in the application of the machine beneath Yellowstone. One source identified 0510 as being the most bloodthirsty member of the Council. According to the source, she is obsessed with the perceived divinity of herself and the Council believing herself to be above any natural laws. In her eyes, normal humans are fodder, a means to an end, in reaching some greater understanding of universal truth. Some sources indicate a possible obsession with the idea of omniscience. This has not been verified. Journal Entry The Tenth Overseer There's a story that's making its rounds among certain groups that deal with the paranormal regarding the Tenth Overseer. The story goes like this. Once there was a Foundation researcher who was involved in helping to manage secure data records, the kind that are created by the Foundation's Department of Internal Consistency. These are records with top-level classification, the kind that no individual short of the overseers themselves are permitted to see. This researcher was preparing these files for transport, and in doing so accidentally broke the seal on one of the files, which were stored in fused steel lunchboxes. They did not view the contents of the file, but for a very brief period of time, the file was unsealed. This breach was reported immediately to the InfoSec Administrator, and the file was resealed and delivered to its final destination. No sensitive information actually made its way into unsecured hands. In most cases, this sort of event would result in some disciplinary action, but that would be the end of the story. That is not the end of the story. Instead, the Tenth Overseer, a former librarian named Diane Walters personally saw to it that the individual responsible for the temporary breach was brutally tortured for what they called hostile actions taken against Foundation information security and used the beatings to try and expose the individual as being a spy. In an apparent bid to try and stop the torture, the researcher admitted to being a spy and was summarily killed. One individual close to the Foundation recalls hearing frequently about how the most frightening overseer was the one they called Green, but the most dangerous was the Archivist. The Archivist is not just an apparent sociopath. She's also seemingly obsessed with the concept of omniscience and believes that it is her duty to control all available knowledge and use it to meet the Foundation's ends. How Diane Walters became the Tenth Overseer was no mystery. Before her affiliation with the Foundation, she was a well-known schoolteacher with a disciplinary record for harming students who did not meet her ridiculous standards of conduct. She was also known for having near-perfect recall, and was twice featured on American television as someone who's able to remember anything that they had ever learned. This made her invaluable, as she was recruited by the Foundation some time in the 1960s. How she eventually became the Tenth Overseer is an internal secret but her presence on the Council came as no surprise to those who are aware of her abilities. One report I read indicated that she's also obsessed with the idea that the Overseers are somehow divine, 
and that their position atop the Foundation's mechanisms was a gift of fate that bestows them with capital reckoning and final judgment on all living creatures. This same report indicated that she is also a shut-in, only leaving her undisclosed estate to enter the Wanderer's library, where she is a frequent, albeit unwelcome, guest. The library is loath to give up its secrets, but there are rumors that the library considers the Tenth Overseer to be something of an abomination, but she does not learn as much as she absorbs information. Despite this, though they have shown themselves capable of shutting individuals out of the library in the past, they're either unable or unwilling to do so in this case. In my travels, I once came upon a portion of a journal that had supposedly been penned by the Overseer herself. In it, she spent a considerable amount of time railing against the ignorant machinations of a failing race, and expressed a truly impressive disdain for other people. At the same time, she also ranted in apparent fear of her own mortality, believing that it was unfair that she should be forced to suffer the same mortal coil as others, despite her being gifted as she is. If I had to guess, should an event take place that would see the Overseer somehow becoming vulnerable, the Archivist would revert to those most base fears and retreat to the only location where she might feel safe. The Library itself. Based on what I know about the Librarians, I do not believe they would hesitate to give her up if that was the case. There is another rumor, of course. One that concerns all of the Overseers, but the Tenth specifically. The rumor is that this world has ended many times in the past, and each time the world has been recreated by an impossible machine built by a long-dead race hundreds of thousands of years ago. Each time the world is recreated, the Overseers who cannot die do not retain the memory of those events, but the Archivist, who has perfect recall, does. If this rumor is true, and the Archivist has been alive and aware for much longer than anyone has any right to guess, it is possible that she's more dangerous than I could ever imagine. To have glimpsed the other side of the apocalypse and lived, and to then remember that experience. It may very well make her the most dangerous person in the world. End of entry. File number 001-09-059. The Outsider. Adult female of Maori descent. Appears to be in her late 30s. The only current member of the council believed to be recruited from outside the Foundation. Despite some irregularities, bears a striking resemblance to Donna Wetu Taylor, a noted geologist who apparently took her own life in 1985, after a massive scandal involving severe academic misconduct was revealed, professionally ruining her credibility and involving her in a number of lawsuits for fraud and the misuse of public funding. Due to her scientific background, 059 is perhaps the most focused research mind on the council. She maintained several major projects at any point in time, several of which have gone on to produce technology used by the Foundation in major applications, such as the Kant Counter. One of the more secretive members of the Council, the Outsider is rarely seen outside of Overwatch Command. Notably, her inclusion on the Council is a point of issue with several other members, who see her as needlessly short-sighted. Journal Entry The Ninth Overseer Unlike many of the other individuals I've described in this journal, there is perhaps the most information available on the Ninth Overseer, the one often called the Outsider. She's called the Outsider because, unlike the other Overseers and many other individuals in the Foundation, she was not recruited from within, but rather was chosen to replace the previous 059 as a civilian. Who the previous 059 was or what they did to earn the ire of the Council is unknown. The end result was a vacancy on the Council and a seat to fill. The selection process, I'm told, was given over 057, Green, who promptly narrowed the selection down to your handful of candidates. Donna Wetu Taylor was one of the names on that list. She was an Australian geologist who had very recently been discredited academically in order to prevent her research, which has unintentionally discovered a powerful gravitational anomaly, from being released to the public. Taylor's name on that list no doubt caused some considerable distress to a handful of other council members, because without exception, all of the information I have gotten about 059 states that her appointment was continuous, and that's it. Full stop. I know she has been involved in several higher-level technical projects within the Foundation, 
But the fact that an outsider was appointed to the council has so grossly overshadowed any and all of her contributions elsewhere that she seems to simply serve as a means to piss off half the council. Notably, one of 059's greatest opponents was the Archivist, who apparently so vehemently opposed the decision that she threatened to quit the council wholesale and had to be convinced by Green and the Ambassador to stand down. The source I spoke to about this incident informed me that whatever means those two used to get the Archivist to step back from the edge changed her considerably, and that afterwards she was even more paranoid and withdrawn than usual. Beyond that, there's really little else to say about her. She should not be especially difficult to find. Several sources have seen her in and around the Australian town where her family home was, though it notably burned to the ground shortly after her appointment. Whether this was intentional or not should not surprise anyone. End of entry. File number 001 slash 08. 058. The Lesser. Caucasian male. Age unknown. Possibly former American industrialist Baron Lehman Holdley, who was believed dead after a train owned by his company, the BG Holdley Group, later acquired by Curvier International, derailed, killing nearly everyone on board. According to many sources, 058 originally held a significant amount of control on the early council, due in no small part to the massive financial holdings he had access to through his brother, Garrison Holdley. After his brother's death and the sale of his company, his authority diminished considerably, and he was eventually ousted as the de facto leader of the council in favor of 057. In the time since, he has maintained his council vote, but his influence is all but non-existent supposedly became obsessed later in life with modifying his body and soul with anomalous technology and artifacts. Paranoid. Obsessed with the idea that other council members will want to kill him. Journal Entry The Eighth Overseer Baron Lehman Hoadley, the man who is almost certainly 058, was a turn-of-the-century American industrialist who, together with his brother Garrison, founded the B.G. Hoadley Group, a holdings company that ran several large-scale mining operations across the southern United States and in Mexico. Additionally, the company was one of the first to lay rail lines from Mexico City to San Antonio, making it immensely profitable and inadvertently funding the BG Holdley rail line. I mention this because I have little doubt that without the assets of Baron and his brother, the early foundation would have been snuffed out in its infancy by larger groups, such as the Allied Occult Initiative or the Church of the Broken God which was very active at the time, and posed a significant existential threat to the Foundation for years. However, due to the resources available as a result of the Holdley's enterprises, it managed to overcome those hardships and emerge as powerful of an organization as there exists in the world. While Garrison was busy running their company, Baron was busying himself with running the Foundation. As I understand it, there was a long period of time after the first overseers were chosen that the first overseer didn't appear publicly, despite his acting as the overseer's overseer. In his absence, Baron used his influence to shape many of the Foundation's policies and investments, including the creating of several sites in the United States and Mexico. It is believed that many of those sites were used to funnel artifacts to the agents of Marshall, Carter, and Dark, and that Baron was receiving kickbacks under the table. However, his unopposed status as de facto leader of the council would not last forever. Sometime after the end of World War II, a train carrying Garrison Hoadley and several other investors crashed on its way across the Rio Grande, killing nearly everyone aboard and leaving Baron to pick up the pieces. He quickly found that much of his wealth was tied up in assets that were left to the BG Hoadley group, of which he was not a chairman. Much to his chagrin, he found that Garrison had written him out of the business in everything but the name, and had left the management of the estate to his son, Frank. Frank Hoadley was not much of a businessman, and didn't see much for the prospect of actually running a business. He quickly put the company up for sale, and received a significant return when the mining group was purchased by Curvier International, whose owner, Via Vakian, had been a close friend of Garrison before his death. Frank and the chairman of the company retired rich, and Baron was left with a pittance. The loss of these resources did not devastate the Foundation, but it did devastate Baron's stature within Site-01. His importance quickly diminished, 
At the same time, the new 057, the woman called Green, was putting her machinations in place. Baron held on long enough to secure resources for a formidable retreat in the mountains, where he could hide from the overseers and his debt collectors, and then promptly disappeared from active participation in the council's matters. I received from a close colleague a collection of council voting logs, all of which register votes for 058. This is likely how he retained his position on the council, though I personally believe that it was much more likely that 057 had simply not gotten around to killing him yet. Either way, Baron Hoadley now bears the title The Lesser, and while he resides in a near impregnable fortress, he is likely the least formidable of the overseers. His cowardice is almost legendary, with 056 reportedly having once called him the most unpleasantly foul yellow belly to ever have a seat at the table. Contained in the back of this journal is a map leading to his estate. I have observed it on several occasions, closely watching it for any signs of 058's comings and goings. Suffice to say, he is clearly not eager to leave the safety of his fortress, and I believe that the other overseers are just happy to leave him there to rot. End of entry. Lesson complete. For more orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation or watch these playlists.